Hi. My name's Mary. Uh, my channel is all about drawing and painting and art. And I'm Whitney, and my channel is all about storytelling. And we are going to share some great ways for you to make simple storyboards to help you plan and tell a story with your video project. So what's a storyboard, and what's it good for when it comes to making videos? Well, a storyboard is a simple drawing that's kind of like a comic book for your video story, and it helps you or your camera person get the shots that you need to help you tell a story or make a video. Check out this video. It's just one shot from the same angle, and it feels kind of boring. Now, check out this video. told a story and had different shots with visual variety, and it was based on a, a simple storyboard, and you can tell because of all the different shots that tell the story. Let's start by talking about developing a simple drawing style. Even if you're not a great artist, you can still create a simple style of storyboard that helps you communicate ideas. Storyboarding is not about drawing good. Um, I've made some awful storyboards myself, and I've seen some awful storyboards that have done the job. And that's really what it's all about. It's just about communicating what's in your head to people outside of your head. You can cut out models in magazines and glue them on the page. You can even do things where you have a stick figure that's green that indicates one character and a stick figure that's red that indicates another character. It doesn't have to be amazing. <laughs> Storyboards help you to take a lot of words on paper and turn them into a draft of the video. That way you don't spend too much time trying to get the shots you don't need to tell your story and you don't miss getting the shots you do need to share your idea. In a video I made, Space Zombie, it's pretty much a moving storyboard. There's no animation, it's just still images and it begins with a shot of a spaceship and it's an empty room and then another empty room of the spaceship and then maybe a close-up of an object or a close-up of a person. And your storyboards are a great way to flesh out those shots and decide what is ultimately the most important thing that you need to put in your frame when you're gonna make your video. We've all read the comics, three or four boxes of cartoons that tell a story. Think of storyboards like that. Draw a single box with your subject in it to represent a shot that you want to get in your video. Once you string your boxes together, voila! you have a complete storyboard, like this. Now let's go over the basics of visual language. Key shots and types of shots, like close, medium, and wide. So what pictures should you pick and how should you frame them? Read your script and identify the key moments. What do you need to show? At the most basic level, you should include the introductory shot and any major action. Anytime you want to say something new or move the camera, you'll want to create a new box in your storyboard. For a close-up, a big circle with some eyes, little circles, could get the idea across. For an action shot, consider showing the figure in motion using arrows to show the action. You can write in the arrows to say zoom or running this way or camera follows person. Add what you need to add so that it makes sense. Now that you're comfortable with what a storyboard is and how it can help you tell a better story, it's time to figure out which images you're actually going to draw. Review your script and underline, circle, or highlight the parts you think will make good images to show. When deciding whether or not you can add the image to the storyboard, consider whether or not you need the shot to tell the story. And keep it tight, keep it fast-paced, keep the audience interested, especially in more long-form content on YouTube. And you do that by cutting out everything that doesn't need to be part of the story, that doesn't drive the story along, that doesn't tell you more about the characters. The most recent short film that I did, Haunting Ian, for instance, has very little dialogue, so that makes the visuals even more important. Every single shot counts. And now comes the best part. Just take a single piece of paper and draw one big line down the center from top to bottom and three lines left to right. Number the boxes from left to right and you draw out the images that you want to shoot. Once you've created a rough storyboard, you can see how the whole thing fits together to tell a bigger story. Imagine this were a flip book. Would it work if you used it like that? 
Review your storyboard with your team and see what ideas that they might have that you want to include or which images that you included that might not be clear. That way your audience isn't bored out of their gourd having to see every single thing. Storytelling isn't reality. It's a version of it told with specific moments. And working together is a great way to help imagine what your video might be. And eliminate the extra shots or the things that don't make sense. There's nothing worse than getting halfway through and realizing, I spent half a day on that thing that I didn't need. The more homework you do at the top of the shoot, getting ready for it, the less work you have to do on set Absolutely. or at your drawing board. <laughs> it's Yeah, it's the same in traditional filmmaking as yeah. well. Each shot setup takes hours and hours. Um, it takes money, it takes time, and you really want to make sure that everything you're doing on set counts. Yeah, you want to be a film ninja. <laughs> in and Precisely. Out. No one saw you. Got it. Good. In this part, let's chat about communicating your images to a team. The storyboard by itself won't get your video made. You have to use it as a tool to help you tell your story, either by following it like a map or blueprint on set or by sharing it with your team. Set is definitely incredibly hectic. There is always a million things going on, and I have found storyboards to be a great communication tool on set um, because there's so many people coming together to make the film or the video that we kind of do really need a foundational common ground. All of them speak the same language of visuals, and when you show them this is what the final shot should look like, then everybody knows what they're working towards and what the final product should be. There are a variety of storyboard styles. Not all storyboards are the same. Sometimes you'll have a rough storyboard that literally just shows the basic shots, while others draw elaborate storyboards that show things happening from moment to moment. Basically, just use what works best for you. Me personally, um, it is tough to stay completely organized on set, so I like to put all of my papers, the script, the shot list, the storyboards, etc., um, all in a clipboard that I do not let leave my hands as much as possible that I can immediately refer to and show anyone that I need to show, here's what we're doing. I've also found them helpful to quickly communicate with the cast as well. For any actor, I think, likes to know what their artistry is going towards, because um, everybody on set is doing a very distinct job, but it all comes together to create one product. So a storyboard is kind of the first step in taking the idea, the concept, from page to screen, and the next step following the storyboard, at least for me, is the shot list. You take the shot list from the script, you break down the script, label the scenes, and then draw them out the way that you want each shot set up. And then once you have your shot list, then you can specifically look at the different camera angles or whether it will be wide, medium, close, etc. cetera. Um, and all of that is easier and streamlined from the script with the shot list. Because the storyboard does give you at least a basic general idea of how many shot setups will be needed, it's also helpful when you're putting together the production schedule because um, you can figure out how many of those shot setups you can fit like reasonably into one production day and which order they should be in. I remember one instance uh, doing a short um, there was a shot that I had broken down on the storyboard that was not included in the shot list. <laughs> and I realized this while going over the storyboards that, oh, we're missing this one very crucial moment because, wow, that would have been an issue to do pickups on later. And it's much better to catch something like that on set, thanks to storyboards, rather than having to go back and redo it later. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out more videos from the Creator Academy, you can click this magical link here. And if you want to see more of my videos and what I do, you can click this magical link here. And more of my work over here.